So for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient, Benaya. And Benaya is a 16-year-old baseball pitcher with a recent onset of persistent right shoulder pain. The evaluating therapist suspects a slap tear with a small tear of the superior labrum and instability of the biceps labrum complex. Which of the following tests is the most likely to be performed to confirm the presence of the suspected condition? So we have A, active compression test of O'Brien, B, NEARS test, C, Kim test, and D is the apprehension test. All right, so let's go to work. Benaya, 16-year-old baseball pitcher with a recent onset of persistent right shoulder pain. Now, the one thing that we know is that there's quite a few different structures in the shoulder that can be potentially causing pain, especially for a baseball pitcher, right? So obviously we have joint related issues. It could be the actual bone. It could be muscle or tendon, you know, supraspinatus, that sort of deal. It could be a labral issue. All right. It could be some type of ligament issue. Um, so there's a lot of different things that could potentially be causing pain here. As we continue down the question, it says the evaluating therapist suspects a slap tear, which is labral, superior labrum, anterior to posterior is what that stands for, slap tear, all right, with a small tear of the superior labrum and instability of the biceps labrum complex. All right, we need to slow up there for a moment because this part right here tells us quite a bit. It tells us the, the condition. We know that there's a problem specifically with the labrum now. It's the, ant, uh, it's the anterior to posterior part of the superior labrum, right? Um, or the superior labrum, anterior to posterior is what they call it. Now, the other thing that we need to understand is what do they mean by this whole instability of the biceps labrum complex? Well, you need to understand that the long head of the biceps inserts into that super lab superior labrum region, all right? And so a lot of times, especially if there's any type of torquing or rotational motion of the shoulder, the biceps gets involved, it yanks on the labrum and causes a superior labral tear anterior to posterior. All right, so that's some of the background information that we need to understand as we're leading into this. Now, the question stem, the last sentence says, which of the following tests is the most likely to be performed to confirm the presence of the suspected condition? So what are we really asking here? What's the question really asking us? What is the special test that we would use in order to confirm the presence of this slap tear? Now, before we get down and dirty in answer choices, we need to know one specific thing about the slap tear. It's actually separated or classified into four different types you need to have a general understanding of the four. But my question to you right now is, which one's the most common? And which one are we dealing with right now? All right, you should be saying to yourself, well, Kyle, this, the type two slap tear is the most common. And that's the one that's a small tear, the superior labrum with instability of the biceps and the labral complex. All right, that's what the definition of it is. Okay, so now that we know that we're dealing with a type two slap tear, we need to figure out which of these special tests are going to help us to confirm the presence of that condition. Let's look at the answer choices again for those of you on the podcast that may have forgotten. A is active compression test of O'Brien. B is the NEARS test. C is the Kim test. And D is the apprehension. Let's go to work. So active compression test of O'Brien, what really is that? Okay, so that's the test where... We, we bring the patient up to 90 degrees of flexion. We move them into 10 to 15 degrees of horizontal adduction. All right. We're going to internally rotate that arm. So the arm's out in front of you, internally rotated. And then what the examiner is going to do is push down on that arm with a downward force. Patient's there to resist you, right? They have to resist that motion. Now, here's the deal. If the patient complains of pain, the active compression test of O'Brien is considered to be positive. The question is, what is that really testing for? Well, here's the deal. If you have shoulder problems, regardless of what it is, a lot of times this test will be positive. But on the MPTE, like literal straight out of the book, what does the active compression test of O'Brien test for? The slap tear, baby. 
the slaps hair. All right. So when you think of active compression test of O'Brien, you need to be thinking labrum, but more specifically, that slap tear. So I like this answer. I think it's great. Doesn't mean it's the right one, but right now it's the best, right? Let's look at B. B says Nears test. Nears test is the test. It's mostly passive, right? So we're going to be taking the patient's arm, internally rotating it, and flexing it all the way up to end range. Right, And we're looking for reproduction of the patient's symptoms. Now, what is the nearest test really testing for? What is that? What is that? You should be saying, primarily, if I looked in the text, if I found it on the MPTE, what would it be testing for? It is subacromial impingement. Subacromial impingement. Is that what our patient's dealing with here? Yes or no? You should be saying no. All right, so I don't like that answer right now. Let's go ahead and put an X next to that. C, chem test. Some of y'all may not be familiar with this one. I didn't see, you know, a lot of people talking about this one today. The chem test is one that you need to know. There's a high specificity here. But what is it really testing for? Well, it's testing for a posterior inferior labral tear. Yes, this one, this one is for a labral tear. It's just not for a slap tear. It's for a posterior inferior labral tear. Now, you might be saying like, whoa, okay, hold on a minute. Like, what is the chem test? I, I don't know if I've ever really heard of that or seen that. Well, that's a test where you're actually going to be torquing the arm a bit. You're going to be bringing the arm up to about 90 degrees, giving a little bit of internal rotation, and you're applying a posterior inferior force at the shoulder. This may be something that you want to look up on YouTube, and that's very, very, very cool. You know, when you get home today, look it up on YouTube and actually see the test done for yourself so you can see what it looks like. But I'm telling you right now that the overall goal of this test is for there to be this compression and rotation into the posterior inferior direction. What are we trying to do, y'all? We are trying to implicate, we're trying to irritate the posterior part of the um, labrum all right posterior part of the labrum i was gonna say ligament posterior part of the labrum y'all posterior inferior okay so a lot of times you can get pain from the patient clicking from the patient clunking from the patient um however again this is looking for posterior inferior and not the slap tear so i'm gonna go ahead and eliminate that one for now last one apprehension a lot of y'all are familiar with this one patient lies supine has the arm out into 90 degrees of abduction, 90 degrees of elbow flexion, and then we're going to slowly rotate that puppy into as much external rotation as the patient has. Now we're looking to see if the patient gets to this point where they're apprehensive, they're alarmed, they're starting to resist the motion, they're scared that the, the, the joint might pop out of place, the humerus might pop out of place anteriorly. All right. And so the apprehension test is looking for what you should be saying anterior capsular or excessive anterior capsular mobility or an anterior dislocation. That's what it's primarily looking for. Now, is that what we're looking for in this question? Is that what our patient potentially has here? The answer is no. The answer is no. So our best answer right now is a active compression test of O'Brien all day long. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. Again, there's a lot of special tests that are out there. One of my strategies that I use when I'm studying these and preparing for the practice exams and so forth is to not learn everything. That's not, that's not what you should be doing. You shouldn't be trying to learn every special test for every pathology that's out there. I pick the primary special test, maximum two, and then that's it. For every pathology, I know like the major special test that you would use for that pathology. And that keeps me from having to learn everything in all these different types. Remember, it's just as important for you to know what is correct on the exam as it is to know what's not correct. So spend the time not learning every single test, but learning the ones that are correct. Learning the ones that are correct for the specific pathology. And learning the ones that are correct for other pathologies. That way, when they throw a bunch of special tests at you, it's like, well, no, I know that the nearest test isn't for the slap tear because it's for subacromial impingement. And I know that the chem test is not for the slap tear because it's for the posterior inferior labral tear. 
right? These already have like a pathology that you'll associate with them. You don't have to worry about learning every special test for every single condition and learning three or four special tests for the same thing. It's crazy. Of course, it's hard to retain. All right. So that is my uh, personal advice for how to improve your score, how to keep yourself from going freaking insane trying to learn these concepts.